Hey friends, let me tell you a quick story. A man walks into a Starbucks and asks the barista, what do poker and animals have in common? And the barista says, are these animals dogs that are playing poker? The man says, no, but that's a great idea for a painting. The barista then says, okay, I give up. What do they have in common? And the man says, each of them can be used as a theme and a mandala, and there's a YouTube video that demonstrates that. So then the barista says, does this video have links in the description to jump to various topics? And the man says, why yes, it does. So the barista says, all right, let's get to it. Okay, here we are in Inkscape. I downloaded these poker-related elements as vector graphics from Vecteezy. There's a link in the description below to learn more about this great resource. I searched for playing card suits, the four aces cards, a queen, a king, and a poker chip. I wanted elements that are black and white and have simple lines. The heart and diamond were actually red, so I changed their fill to black. Now I'll go through a quick time lapse of building the mandala. My goal here is to demonstrate how we can add thematic elements to our mandalas, so I won't focus too much on how to build them. All the techniques I used are covered in my earlier video called How to Draw Mandalas in Inkscape. There's a link for that video in the description if you want to cover that first. The poker chip is ideal for the center element. Some smaller petals seem appropriate to surround the chip. I'm using 16 copies rotated around the center. Next, I have eight larger petals rotating around the center. These are large enough to place one of the poker elements inside. Now, eight more shapes large enough to hold an element and a few decorative lines between them. Then, 16 poker chips look good with their rotation around the center. Eight larger rounded petals rotate next. Then, four decorative petals in between to balance things out. Now we can start adding the poker elements. I have each of the individual suit icons with two copies all pointing towards the center. Next, I have the queen and king rotating in the next open spaces. I added one of each, grouped them together, and then rotated four copies around the center. Then for the larger outer petals, I did the same thing in a slightly larger size, along with flanking suits for each one. Finally, I want to use the four aces as outer petals in the gaps between the rounded petals. Now we can see an issue with the bottom part of the cards conflicting with the rest of the mandala. I'd like to show a novel solution to make those parts of the cards disappear. The solution is to use the rounded petals outline as a dividing border to separate the parts of the cards we want to see and the parts we want to delete. My first choice would be to use the cut path feature, but that doesn't work with these card elements. However, we can accomplish this with a clipping shape as I'll demonstrate now. Let's duplicate that outline and move it to the right. With the outline selected, let's use the Paint Bucket tool and make sure the Grow Shrink setting is set to 2 pixels. We'll fill the outline with a color. Then, let's select the four cards and align them to the center of our shape on the right. This shape can't be used to click the cards since that will only keep the bottom parts of the cards. So, we need a shape that covers the top parts of the cards. To do this, we'll create a circle, align to the center of our shape, and make it big enough to cover everything. We'll drop it to the bottom layer. Now, we can select the yellow shape, and then the circle, and use Path Difference to get the clipping shape we need. We'll bring that to the top layer. Then, all we have to do is select both, and use Object, Clip, Set Clip. We can discard the outline that we no longer need. Perfect. Now we'll just select the cards and align them to the center of the page. And there we have our poker-themed mandala. I like it. By the way, if you like content on using Inkscape to create art, go ahead and click here to subscribe. This will help you get notified on new content and it will help me grow the channel. That's what I call a win-win. Okay, I'll group this all together and move it aside so we can get to our animals theme. 
This time, I searched Vecteezy for vector graphics of animal head icons. One of the search results was this page of 43 animal heads. That's just what I want. I'll use just some of them, but it's nice to have choices. I'll breeze through the mandala creation this time. I'm going with petals in groups of four or eight rotated around the center. Again, my goal is to leave large enough spaces to place the animal elements. I'll place the bear in the center four petals, then the bull in the next level of spaces. Hmm, that reminds me of Chicago with the bears and the bulls. Next, I'll add the cat-like head in the next level. The next petal is large enough for three elements, so I'll do that. Then a pig, and another space that can hold three elements. Finally, the elephant completes the theme. Now when I look at this, it's a little unbalanced. The line thickness of the mandala is greater than the thickness of the animals. I can address this by selecting all the animals and adding a stroke to them to thicken their lines. First, I'll try a stroke thickness of one pixel. Maybe I can go to two pixels and try that. No, that's too thick. I'll keep trying different levels, just as if I'm at the eye doctor and she says, better A or better B. I think one pixel was best, so I'll leave it at that. Great, here are the final theme-based mandalas. Hopefully, this helps you visualize other opportunities to create your own themed mandalas. Let's go to the outro. Nice. I hope this video sparks your creativity for your own themed mandalas. For my next video, I'll focus on geometric patterns and see how we can use the Shape Builder tool to get those made. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.